And what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to replicate this story, edit, and then replicate story. And I'm going to replicate this story and all the 50 other nine stories. From story number two to story number 60. So when I hit apply, it will show me how the stories will be look like. And then I'll say, okay, we'll take like a minute or two minutes until the stories are uh, generated for the entire building. But I'm just like doing this, like, because I don't have time right now to, to do it like 10 by 10. But what you will have to do is that you create your own columns for story 1 to 10, 10 or 11 to 20, 21 to 30, and so on, and then assign them to a structure. So this is my uh, 3D model. And some of you complain about that the computational efficiency of their computers are not cannot handle 60 stories. You can use 40 stories. But I believe like 60, like my laptop is like, Four years old it's i7 so i believe it will be the same with most of your laptops so does anyone have any problems generating 60 stories like the model is lagging you cannot it's use... a 40 story this still takes time i i tried it it depends on your computer like maybe no it, it takes like a second and this computer is like four years old like it's not it's i7 like i believe if you have an i7 computer it's just like in a second like did you see like because it doesn't have many details well i'm not sure but this is how i generated the uh 60 stories so let's see now how we can do an outrigger how can we model an outrigger so for the outrigger we need to we need to differentiate between the outrigger okay do you guys get it so what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to show you how I can create an outrigger here in the X direction and also in the Y direction. If you make an outrigger only here, so this will be able to resist the loads in the X direction. If you don't have an outrigger here, so there's no, there's nothing that can resist. So I, I'm going to do another one. And I'm going to show you how to draw build. Usually there is some research that shows the perfect position for an outrigger is at the one third and two third of the building heights. So you can search it, but actually it depends on the building properties. It's not perfectly the one third, it could be much more. So you need to try to find the, the perfect locations. There's some optimization algorithms, there's lots of things, but, but <coughs> what, we, what I'm going to try right now, I'm going to story number 20, which is the one third of the building height, maybe story. Yeah, let's go to story number 20. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do an out trigger here. So I'm going to delete these columns and these columns. And these columns. Okay, and, and also I'm going to delete all the columns on the edge because I'm going to, to make a build. Like I'm going to delete all these columns as well. And then I will go to define sections slab sections and uh, not slab wall define sections wall sections and i'm going to add a copy of the wall and i'm going to call this section out trigger or 100 centimeter and i will keep it 100 centimeter usually we will keep the out trigger the maximum thickness of the connected columns or the shear walls like if i have a shear wall that is 100 centimeter but the columns are 70 centimeters. So I will take the outrigger 100 centimeters so that it can be more stiff than the shear wall, either equal or more stiff than the shear wall. But if you choose the outrigger to be like 40 centimeters and you have a shear wall that is 100 centimeters, so it will be more stiff 
then the outrigger, so the outrigger might not be able to connect the columns with the shear wall because it's a kind of weak element. Yeah, but but it actually it's possible. Like it will add some stiffness, but not with the efficiency that we are looking for. We are sacrificing a whole story from the building space. So we need to use this space very good. Okay, so right now. No, I'm going to add walls. So what I'm what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to make uh, walls at this story. So here I'm going to make an outrigger OR 100 centimeter. So the outrigger basically is going to connect it from the shear walls all the way to the end. And here. all the way to the end. Let me draw the belt first so that I can snap the edges of the belt. So the belt is from here. Hey, sir, so your um, outriggers and your wall are going to be the same, have the same property? Yeah, okay. but it's not necessarily. Like, it can be different properties in real life. No, no actually, they have some openings. Like, uh, so openings that allow that you can go in. So... Yeah, but we here we are making lots of simplification so that you don't consume lots of time on modeling because the idea of this course is not to model but to understand the concept. But in real life, if I make like this, all the spaces will be not accessible. So we will have like some kind of openings at some locations at this walls so that allows people to go in and go out. And usually these stories are used for service, like to have... Uh, it chillers or things for HVAC items or things for the service of the building. Okay, so this is in real life. And sometimes they are from trusses. So if they are trusses, so it will be much easier like um, because the trusses has spaces in between them. And sometimes our trigger can be uh, two stories, not only one story, it can take the depths of two stories. Yeah, we mentioned that you gave us an Excel sheet, like uh, 30 by 100, I think. So it's not the uh, dimension of the outrigger. The outrigger is open story. Yeah, it's you. Not a big thing, like I. Just, uh, no, uh, the I gave you dimension of outrigger like a beam. Yeah. Yeah, I, I said it's a big thing. Okay, so it should be like the height of the whole story, not the not mm -hmm. not not a depth. Okay, I'm going to go it over. Width is our shear wall, right? Did you gave it for a hoop, right, sir? Yeah, it's better to be the same width of the shear wall. Might it change it? Yeah. So this is how is the outrigger look like? Was an outrigger has the same thickness of the shear wall? So if I look at the three D. It will be something like this. So it takes all the columns above and below. Something look look like this. And if I want to make another one at story number, yeah. the wall is not on the on the grid line of the columns. And when the outrigger comes down, it's on this at this lab. And under it, there is no column. You mean underneath it? Yeah, I think you have to. Okay, so yeah, that that's that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, you can actually, it's better that we have the the columns underneath the outrigger if you want to. So for the outrigger system, that's that's for the more efficient system. If we need a more efficient system, like you need to have these columns are in this in in the same line with these shear walls. In our model, I move the walls down to the 
But it needs to be connected with this shear wall. If it's not connected with this shear, with this part. I move the walls down. The grid line of the oh, so you mean like you move the walls, the shear walls? Yes. Was that? I think yeah, we can we can do this assumption. Wait a minute. Oh, can say it again? Yeah, what? Okay, so he's saying it's either it's better for the outrigger to pass over right. these columns, right. and that's right because this is going to hold. So can you imagine that you have a span of the beam? But it's still a deep beam. Right. You take the loads, but it's better. That it can mix it's because, really because this is the idea of the outrigger, it connects all these mm -hmm. columns. The thing is, I made the AutoCAD file with three meters and I don't have this problem. But when you generate your own model with 2.75 or something, so you'll find these columns is going down or going up. So you either can do one of these, you either move the shear walls closed until they align with these columns. Oh, you mean you move these columns up until they align with the shear wall? Okay, just don't. Yeah, does these two columns on that floor? No, it's oh, all the floors. Yeah, so you either move them, move them here, or move them. Here. And that's actually very simple. You can mark all the columns and all the story. Why like, I do? I know I do. I know I do. Okay, don't show. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But anyway, let's let's do it like like what we have here, and you can either like delete them. Okay, I'm going to delete them. Oh, which story is this? This is twenty one. Okay, and and you know how to do it at 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 story number forty, and then you run your model. So this is for the outrigger. I'm not going to do it again. Actually, I might replicate it. Might delete the whole thing here. Delete. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to story. So I deleted an entire story. And I'm going to store the plan. Story number 20. Apply. OK. And I'm going to select this whole story. And edit, replicate story, and I will put it in a story number 40. Apply. You gotta change the columns though. What columns? There's your columns on that story, because when you go. What was the first one? Uh, yeah, I said like at first you do this, but I, I don't have time right now. I mean, all the columns are the same for the entire build. Oh, oh for your tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is how it looks like. I have two out triggers, one at story number 20 and one at story number 40. Okay, so this is how to do out triggers. How to do trusses. So for trusses, I will do it. Sorry, uh, sorry, to confirm. Yeah. The outrigger is gonna have the height of the floor and it's gonna be the, the, uh, the whole floor. Just one minute. I see two columns here are deleted. Okay, so just one minute. Hit it. And the, and the wide of the, the shear wall. 21. I deleted two columns from story number 21 by mistake. Let's go down. Okay. Yeah. What is your question? Right. Um, so the outriggers are gonna have the um, exterior and interior are gonna be the height of the floor and the length of the. Yeah, the width of the shear wall. Yeah, but you can delete the and it's only one model. So you will take the master model and you will do out trigger and take the master model and do traces. Oh, okay. Okay, you don't have to do it for all the models. One model without rigging. One model without rigging. So basically, the models will be the Excel sheet that I sent to you. So I will have a one model that is mastered that has 30 centimeter widths for the spandrel beam. And all these are the dimension of the columns for each story. And then 
the shear wall thickness will be 100 centimeter, but the width, uh, the, the coupling beam widths and depths is a changing. So we have 30 and 90, but 30 and 90 is for the master model. So basically you will develop a master model that has 30 centimeter uh, widths and the coupling beam is 30 by 90 and the outrigger we can, uh, I gave you the outrigger location, but I didn't give you an outrigger size. Did I give you outrigger size? No. 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 I just gave you an outrigger. I just the coupling beam. The coupling beam has a width and depth. These two. So I just give you the location of the outrigger in story 15, story 45, but make the outrigger the same thickness as the shear wall. What's that? It's, it's no this one no this is if you decided not to test the different widths and different depths of the coupling beam and you want to only to do one model because these are extra eight models so for extra credit so if you if you did these dimensions if you tested 25 30 40 50 so you will get extra 15 percent bonus but if you want the idea? Yeah, what is it? Yeah. The idea, this actually was my master's thesis. It's like to investigate the impact of the coupling beam widths on the lateral behavior of the building. And also the the depths on the lateral behavior of the buildings. This is very, very important for, for tall buildings. If like if increasing the widths, what you will find increasing the widths is not is not is not like that much. Like if you increase the standard of beam widths. It doesn't affect the lateral behavior. It will be the same, but the depth is going to effectively decrease everything, decrease the lateral drift, and that's why what I want you to discover by yourself. Like you will find when you plot, you will find when the widths, you will find it's almost a straight line, but with the depths, you will not find that your line is going up. That means, or the, the line is going down, depends on what what you are looking sure. at. In, in I don't know if it shows the difference. And actually, it's always controlled by the stand to depth ratio. And here, what I'm giving you, it's a stand to depth ratio is different. So that's that's what controls that we what what we call deep beams or not. You guys will will figure so out when you're running. Yeah, the coupling beam image. Yeah. Okay, sir. Hmm. So when you say for extra credit, what you want us to do is you want us to so. Just for the regular, we did 30 and 50, 30, 70, 30, 90, 30, 110, right? Mm -hmm. But then when you say for extra credit, you do 25, 50, 40, 50, and 50, 50. And then you do 25, 70. Okay. No. Third, so this is your basic model, the 30, 30, 90. Right. Okay. okay. So when you will test these models, you will do 30 with 25, 30 with 30, which yes. is the master model, 30 with 40, 30 with 50. And 90 is constant for all these models. Right. And when you want to test the depths, so, so it will be 30, 30, and then 50, gotcha. and then 70, and 90 is the masters, and 100. Yeah. Yeah. The standard and not the so, standard will affect. So actually, so, the depths are affect, yeah. The depths are affect, but actually, I didn't want you to have lots of models. So, so I mean, we need to change the standard of this because yeah, I mean, this it does create these 11 models in change the coupling. Oh, and, the and, the spandrel beam is, is, is the beams oh, on the parameters, the beams oh, here. Oh. Okay, so I'll move on here. I'm just like want to show you the, the trusses. So I'm going to show you how to do truss system view uh, and then set elevation view. Oh, not elevation. Let's do set 3D view, edit view, set 3D view, and I'm going to show X to Z. And basically, when you will have equal spacing between the stories, three meter height, and that's what I recommend that you all will do if you if you are going to do the the braces. Uh, view set three D view X C. Oh, this is the X Z. All right, all right. So what you will do, you will define. A, a frame element you can make it concrete you can make it a steel whatever you would like you can use actually 
a column size like the same column that you are using for the building and you will keep drawing in the elevation side so basically you will select either it's a steel column reinforce a concrete column you will pick your section from here and then you will go step by step here and keep drawing wow uh, pick any dimension for the bottom. Just one moment. Yeah, pick any dimension. Okay. It crashed. Actually, I have um. Uh, three mo models are running at the same time. right so once you define the frame element of the truss and you keep drawing in the um in the side view like something like this you keep drawing one by one if you have equal story height for your entire building you will find that they come together like they align as a one line and when you hit the edge you keep refer to the other side and you do it for the four sides Okay, so if you if you did this, you can get the other five percent bonus if if you try this model. You can choose whatever section, steel or concrete section. Okay. Hey, so if you go back though, why don't you um that first one? I know that first floor is five. Yeah, the thing is, I did a mistake. I made the first floor three, and oh. the other floor is five. Oh. I can't change it. I go to the store, but I have to keep changing the 60 story yeah. but if you did it at first all of them are the same it will be going something okay. like this and just start the end and go all the way up yeah okay so with this i believe the the geometry part is done and let's go to the loads part can you turn on the lights gene do you want that on every side of the building or do you want that on every side uh, the four sides. All four sides. And we, do we start the same corner on all four sides? What was that? Yeah. Oh, we do it at the end on all four sides. Okay. Yeah. So you will do it this way and you will do it this way from both sides. So once you are done with this zigzag, you do the other zigzag at the same side. Oh, okay. Do you want to see the size? Based on ASC7, it, that's what I'm going to do right now. Can you turn off the light? All right, so now. What we did right now, we want to do lateral, we developed a lateral load resistance system for our structure. We are using tubes, we are using shear walls. So this is one of the things. We usually do preliminary dimension for our structure from the gravity load. Actually, I don't like hypothetically say that the columns is uh, 100 centimeter by 100 centimeter. So this is things that you need to do gravity load analysis, you need to discuss with the architecture, but we are just doing things, some assumptions. And then that's what we did. We prepared a 3D model for the airship wave load analysis. And also this 3D model, same thing, is going to be used for wind load analysis, which out of the scope of this class, but this is how we use it. And what we are going to learn right now, how we can perform equivalent static lateral force analysis, how we can convert the earthquake wave loads as equivalent static forces on, on the building. And because this is the thing, you have your building, and it hits with an earthquake. 
So when the earthquake hit, hit here, it made a base shear. We call the amount of force that the earthquake hit at the base as a base shear. This base shear is keep getting distributed at each story. Each story is getting a contribution of this force and makes this story move. We need to know the contribution of each story from this force. So what do you think this force depends on? The contribution of each story from the base shear. Like which story is getting the maximum hit, the maximum force or the maximum contribution from the forces at the base? Like you assume, for example, let's assume that this is my building and I shake my building like this. Did you see what happened like this? This moved very far. That means that it's getting most of the force, lots of force. Why? Because it depends on the story level. Depends on the, the mass and the story where it is with respect to the base, okay? So the bigger the mass, the bigger the story take from the base shear. The higher the story, the bigger the takes from the contribution out there. How can I prove this? From here, can you see the amount of delta out there? And the amount of delta down there? So that means this story is getting much bigger force than the lower story. And that's what we need to calculate. This is actually the idea. I, the idea is, I want to know if this building got hit with an earthquake at the base, how much shear force that this base taken, and how how can I distribute these forces at the poles? Okay. And by the way, most of the earthquake, the amount of the base shear is around ten percent of the weight of the building, or the what we call the effective weight. So the base shear of an earthquake usually around ten percent. Like if, if you got 20%, so the number is very way off. So usually the base shear is 9%, 11%, 12, 8, something like this. All right, so let's see uh, what we have here. All right, so let's, what we are going to do, we are going to learn how we do earthquake wave equivalent letter force procedure according to the ASSC 716. Each country has different standards in doing the, the seismic design, but they are like almost similar, okay? So let's see how these standards look like. The standards will start by, you will need to identify the location of your building because based on the location, each location has different size, size measurement. So the, uh, the and we, we call this by the maximum considered earthquake wave for each region. So, for example, California have almost the maximum considered earthquake wave, but if you look at four, that will be the lowest. There is a map. If you look at the ESC 716 at figure 222, you will find that there is a map that tells you with a control map like this. This is the maximum considered earthquake wave in LA in terms of the percentage out of the gravity acceleration. So the gravity acceleration G is 9.81 9 meter per second squared, right? Okay, so it means 200 means 2G. 2 150 means 1.5G. So if I want to design for an earthquake in LA, I depends on the location, I, I should know is it going to be 200% of the ground acceleration, 150, 125, if I if I look at Florida, it will be like 5%, 10% of G, so it's a very low G. You can assume whatever the location of your building at. But if you want to go to the extreme, you can assume that your building is in Los Angeles and you know what is the amount of G. And the G, we have two values of G. One of them is for the short acceleration and for the one second equivalent earthquake rate. So we will calculate both SS and S1. So SS is like for, for Los Angeles is 1.6 G and S1 is 0.6 G, okay? So we calculate both the one, the S and also at one second. All right, the second thing is the soil. The soil control how your building absorb the seismic energy. So you go define your soil. You can assume your soil, but actually how about we all be consistent we will assume that we have a stiff soil, not rock, not clay, but it's just a stiff soil, which is type D. Okay, so this is the, the steps, how the codes are developing the responsive spectrum curve, the relationship between T and A, right? Okay, once we are done, the second 
thing, once we identify the soil, we get what is called site coefficient. Based on the soil, you will hit some tables in the code, and then you will get two factors, FA and FD, short period site coefficient and long period site coefficient. So this table, table 11.4, you base on the soil type and the S that we calculated, you can get the, uh, the FA and the same thing, another table for FD. So we need to get this to balance. The second thing, we use the information that we calculated from previous slide. This one, SS and SL with FA and FB, and then I'm going to share this slide. Yeah, so, and then SMS and SM1, basically we'll multiply FA multiplied by S, this FA with the short uh, acceleration, and FB multiplied by S1, the long acceleration. And then we get what's called risk targeted maximum uh, considered earthquake. Then, we convert this risk targeted earthquake to design spectral acceleration. We multiply the value that we calculated here by two over three and two over three. We reduce a little bit the seismic force. And I'm going to tell you why we reduce this here. And once we identify all the soil factor and calculate SCD, the acceleration SDS and SDL, we use these two to develop this response spectrum by some equations. The first equation, as you see, the responsive victim curve has four different curves. This curve, this curve, this curve, and another fourth curve. Let's see how what is the equations to draw these. So the first equation, the first part, like here, is from zero to two to t zero, and from t zero to t s t short, and from t s to one second, and from one second to t long period. Okay. So that means that. Here, one means that building that has a fundamental read equal to one second. The time that takes the building to go this and come back to the original position is one second. Okay, so that four period that less than t zero here to zero or less means this line. It's a problem. This equation, an equation that function SDS, the value that we calculated here, and then multiplied by 0.4 plus 0.6. Multiplied by t, the fundamental period of our structure over t zero. Okay, so I will like in a bit you will see what is t zero. T zero has a function. T s has a function. T l has a function. Each one of these has a function. And then from t zero to t s, for periods greater than t zero but less than t s, basically the acceleration is equal to s design s d s. Okay, the one that we calculated here, SDS. Then for this curve, SA is equal to SDL over T. And for the first one, SA is equal to SDL multiplied by TL over T squared. How can we get this T has equations? T0 is 0 multiplied by this factor. TS is a function of SDL over SDS. So everyone has an equation, except T long. T long has a map, T out, like long periods. And actually, this is where our structure acts. Because we are designed a tall building. So I basically, I believe that you will have a period that are 10 seconds. So our building is not one second. Our building is going to lie here in this area. If we are having a building that is 10 story, it's going to be here. Something in between this one. But since our structure is very tall, the period is going to be very long. So you don't have to draw this entire response spectrum. You actually can use if, if you know that your period is, is going to be more than TL. So it basically uses the equation to get A. Okay. But you can do it for practice if you want. And I will show it to you in the in task how to do this automatically. You don't have to go through all these equations, you just put inputs. What is the soil and the, and the software is going based on the soil is going to calculate the other things but you should be aware of the standards how they are developed okay so the second thing is i want you to know is the importance factor of your structure each building when we design building has an importance factor like if you have a residential building it's completely different than commercial completely different than emergency facilities 
like police station, fire station. Do you know why, why each building ha uh, has a different risk category? Why? Exactly, because if you have an earthquake, yeah, the residential building can fail, but the hospital cannot fail. It needs to be at a different category because if the hospital is failed, cannot take care of the patients. Shelters like stadiums and uh, uh, are designed for risk category high. However, they shouldn't, but they are used sometimes as a shelter. If they are going to be used as a shelters during emergency, so they need to increase the risk category. That means that when you design the force, you multiply the force by 1.25 or 1.5. Some uh, like some uh, investors when they build tall buildings, they are investing millions of dollars in these buildings. They decide that they go beyond the standards and they design their building at a different risk category because they don't want their buildings fail or their investment to be uh, failed. But for, for our structure, we will ask you, and actually this is the definitions of the different risk categories. How is the building is defined uh, based on the risk categories? And we are going to assume that the structure, our structure is risk category two, and for seismic importance factor, IE is one. Okay, so it will be one. All right. So the, the second thing that I want to talk about is the seismic design coefficients and factors. Can you turn on the lights for a few minutes? Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the seismic design is the only design for structures that we go to nonlinear analysis, or we design the elements as not uh, elastic. So we assume that the structure is going to have permanent deformation. However, for any other load, dead load, live load, wind load, we need to design that our members are going to elastically perform elastic, elastically. What do I mean by performing elastically? That if I have a member and it's taking a load like this slab, and let's assume that we all sit in the middle of the slab and we keep jumping, this slab needs to come back at the neutral position elastically, like there should not be a permanent deformation. Okay, so this is designed for dead load, live load, wind load, snow load, all the loads, except earthquakes. Earthquakes, if we design for the elastic deformations, your cross sections will be very, very big, will be really, really, very big. So we need to go to inelastic design. And this is kind of concept um, helps in two things, savings, white savings. It's kind of like, uh, much time right now. You guys need a break? You guys need a break, like 10 minutes break and come back? Okay, 10 minutes break and we come back. And then I explain the inelastic design. Hey, sir, did you say R-I-E-1? Yeah. yeah, the risk category will be risk two, which is I-E equal to one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You will, it will be a presentation and report with the abstract introduction. Uh, method to analysis and results. And it will be an SCD paper format. And I'm going to send you a paper that shows how you should prepare your uh, results. Like a paper format, like you are writing. Yeah, next week, the results. Next week. Yeah. So on the Excel, if we don't want to do the boundary section, my group is too big. So doing level models might be kind of intense. Okay, so I don't know. If maybe I mean, if we want to do, on, we have this idea. But if we want to do the, the uh, no bonus, it's just a single dimension that you're showing, and that line says no bonus. Oh, uh, oh uh, yeah, it's you need to only do one model, not the uh, eight. I have. To, I'm gonna talk to around and see how much. Well, you are two people. Let's assume that uh, most of the groups are three. I think the majority of them are actually four. Okay, let's assume that they are four, and each the contribution of each one would be like three. So you guys at least need to make, make six models. If we want the bonus. Yeah, if you want a model. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. I was thinking, yeah. yeah. What? Who? No, no, I looked at. Oh, you didn't want to? 
Um, he, he, asked, he asked, uh, like, I mean, like, you know, but you said that you don't have anyone in your group, and you don't have kids, so I tried to connect with you guys. But he has lots of energy. Um, you know, you try not to go like along with each other. Yeah. He needs to learn. Why is that floor that you put in there? Is it useless? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, it's really for service, like, you know, um, like the HVAC equipment, like there's like big chillers and lots of things and put something there so to use it. So, but it's not used for incubation, like, no offices, not People. It serves just the structural purposes, but also sometimes they allocate the allocate yeah. pieces, pillars, the HVAC yeah. equipment, something like that. Yeah, but you lose the floor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You are going to do four floors. Okay. Yeah. So the bracing, you don't want to call the bracing, you just want that no, cross brace. Well, this, yeah, like this. So you will do from this side and from this side, and then they will come together at one point. Thank you. Sounds good. Uh, so one thing you know, uh, there is like a paper. It's not like a, it's not a paper. It's the same thing. Just like you will allocate what you write in a specific format. So you will put an abstract here. You make two columns. It's it's kind of the same thing. It will help me with the grading if you all have the same format. Oh, yes. oh, okay. And eventually, then you make a separate. I already created the midterm, but I just like need to uh, put it on the CC on canvas. Okay, oh, okay. you will. Yeah, yeah, I will okay. definitely. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. This week, yeah, next next week, you guys definitely will have the grades yeah. for everything, the homework, so, like, yeah. Professor, uh, over here. Um, I got the situation on the top because I got um okay, let me ask a question. So Mark Mark, yes, so you guys when you will do your model, do you activate the 3D? I mean, like do you make it extruded view or um or simple view like this? Because if you talk about for the six stories, because if you make your building extruded, like this is frame element. Mm -hmm. This frame element, right, can you see? Yeah. If you made it 3D, yeah. it will be very heavy. No, no, my, my so, okay. 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 All right, so here, here, um, see at level 51 to 60, I have 40 centimeters of uh, columns. columns. Okay. And I got this band drop beams like um at 50 over here. So it, it was like that in the, in the quarter. So oh, it, you mean it's bigger than the columns? Yeah, it's bigger than the columns. Well, you can keep it because uh, can I keep it like look that? from design and building perspective. No, we will not keep it. But we only wanted this. No, no, what will happen? Okay? Okay. But in real life, no. And I put the same like just for it yeah. had to happen. I put the for the for the braces system. I put forty by forty. You try for but forty is very small. You might try much something bigger like. Yeah. Like maybe maybe, maybe make it bigger, bigger on the other side too. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, you can try forty. Actually, what I wanted you to do is just like to test how this is going to impact the lateral behavior. Forty is going to make different. If you make it sixty, it's going to make more different. Yeah. Hundred is going to make more different. So I just like want to. But do you want to try with different? Um, no, 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 just one. But if you want, you can actually select all the columns. Yeah. You can make it trace and name it. And if you select trace, I select all the traces that you draw. You can assign different sections and run the model and see mm -hmm. how different. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, we can use the parameter for the seismic or uh, you need to get a seismic low. Like what's very new of this? You can use what? Okay. For the seismic parameter. You know, I just use ASTM with the, the ASU uh, parameter. Parameters? 
but so that's okay. oh yeah this is what i'm i'm going to i mean that yeah, we can be the assume one in no 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 you will use the ones that are related to our structures like the one, if you, like no. the one in my slides well uh, okay so here's the thing you where you are going to assume your structure is it los angeles or florida so this is what control where is the seismic zone is and what type of soil that you have all this what yeah yeah that's why i'm telling you you can use los angeles the one that i did and the soil is the that's why I need you guys to keep consistent. So I might, after like the break, I ask you all to do the same thing. You choose Los Angeles and you choose soil type D and you keep going on. So you guys can confirm with each other because most of you will have a uh, structure period close to each other. Give us the promise of search No, no, I will give it to you. And actually I will tell you how the software is doing it. Okay, so that's how building would look like with the because you assign my group the location of the yeah. Yeah. so you said 129 we're not 60 so leave it like that okay so now the only thing is that so i have to remove some columns yeah there was a column that was here yeah. i removed it right. okay no problem try it. no no like no. uh, remove it you, you can go with these columns okay but now right. my columns they're not they're not they're not aligned because so yeah. Those are here, but I also have some uh, one here, one here. Okay, one here. you can move the columns on this line to be with the shear walls. Like you can get extended with the shear walls. So like, can I leave it like that? Or you can't look. What you can do if you have a columns, let's make me uh, let's make a plan. And for example, I will say okay, if I want to change the location of these columns, I can delete them. Yeah, this one. And this one, you can delete them and you can activate all the stories from here. If you activate all the stories, it's going to delete them from all the stories. Okay. And then you can draw another two that aligns with the column here. But it's not, but it's not going to put it back in. No, if you make all the stories, it's going to be all the way down. But you will have to change the cross section. Okay. But if, uh, for example, um, I can just change, make those changes in my master story. Yeah, it will be it will get it changed to all the entire stories. To all the stories that are like um similar to the master stories. Yes, exactly. It's going to be changed. But can I just choose to just leave it like that? And not change it? Or you okay, want to you can leave it like this. But do you want do you want us to change it? Or? No, no, you can leave it like this if you want. Okay. Yeah, you said All right, so you're saying that those columns I can rename them. Like and this is only for the outrigger case. Like if you don't have an outrigger, you will not have this problem. Okay? Yeah. And then um, the size of the braces, you can make them, you know, like 0.9, 60 by 6, 0.7 by 0.6. 0.6 and then like, yeah. uh, 0.6 meters, 0.6 meters. Okay. And do we how many pages do you want it? How many what? pages? No, it just depends on your results. I need you to do an abstract that describe what are you going to do, what are you going to analyze, uh, what results that we have you have, and and actually list. Uh, what is your building a sensitive tool? What did you observe when you increased the coupling beam widths or the coupling beam depths? You know what I mean? I'm going to explain it. Okay. We have something. Okay. I'm going to send an announcement to explain more. Okay. But pretty much only computing the deflection. No, no, it will be a list of things. I will write them. Okay. And I will show you them how to extract them. All right. Thank you. Sure. Right. So. Yeah, we guys, let's let's get back six fifteen, right? So did I? Told you of six fifteen or six seven. Did you guys remember? I told you to come back six thirty, not yeah. six thirty. <laughs> not six thirty. It was six, and I felt like six ten or six fifteen. Something like. Oh, it was. Do you remember when you said when you come back? 
When will we start back? 615? Yeah. Oh. I don't know. Yes, sir. Friday, the university is closed, right? Yeah. Uh, I think so, yeah. Yes, sir. I think Friday and Saturday, right? Thursday and Friday. So, guys, can, can we get settled so that we can restart? All right. So, what I was talking about that the seismic load design is the only design that we designed the elements to be inelastic, to perform inelastic. So, when, when we say inelastic, that means that we are designed for a lower force. What do, what do, we, what do we mean by lower force? Like, for example, Let's assume that this is our structure and is getting hit by an earthquake. And this, it, this structure is going to deform like this. It's going to make this delta, right? If we are going to draw a relationship between the force at the base, F, and delta, so let's put delta at x, y axis and F at y axis. If it's elastic, so the relationship will be linear, something like this, right? will be something like this, linear. But if it's inelastic, let's assume our structure has F, this is, we will call it F elastic, and this is delta corresponding to the F elastic. But what we do, because this will be a very, very big force, like the column that you have, and you assume that it's a hundred centimeter, is going to be 200 or maybe 500 centimeter if you design on this elastic force. So what we do, we design the building on less force, like force here. And this, also this force, we will call this force F inelastic. F inelastic. And with this force, your building will have the same delta. Like your building is going to perform something like this. It will be like if it gets a very low force, it will be elastic. Like let's assume that you get your building hit with a small earthquake and make force like this. It will come back to the same position. It will return on the same line. If it gets a force like this, it will return back on the same line. But if it hits this force, this is the maximum that your building is going to get and then is going to make inelastic deformation. So if your building is going to get more forces, your elements is not going to resist them because your elements is very tiny or not strength enough or not strong enough to take more force and is going to make permanent deformation. So once the earthquake is gone, you will have this delta as a permanent deformation in your structure. So the difference is between this and this, if you design your building on these forces, it can get this delta and return it back to the original position zero. But if you design your elements on these forces, it will have residual deformation that will never get back. What I mean by this, you will have some cracks in your building that will never heal, and you need to repair your building. Uh, you will have maybe some permanent deformations in the columns, in the beams, and lots of things. But what is the take from this? The take is, is that you designed your building to take lower forces, which will decrease the how much you are going to spend because you decrease the cross sections, you decrease the material. So this is a saving. Uh, what else? But we also designed the building to be safe. Like the building is not going to fail. The building has the safety, but you will feel uncomfortable like looking at the building and seeing the cracks and the beams and the columns. The building will stay, it's a safe, you can occupy it, but it needs some repair so that you, you have the feeling of safety, okay? So we don't design the building to fail, but we design the building to have some permanent deformation. And to do this, each building has different design way. Like you design your joint in a specific way to be inelastic. Like if you have a frame connection, like if you have a column and beam, so they will have some uh, stirrups like this and like this, you increase the stirrups at the joint. So this connection is going to be designed in different way so that it can be, it can perform elastically without failure. Same thing, the connections and everything. So each system based on the lateral load resisting system, columns, 
uh, sorry, frames, steel frames, concrete frames, infilled frames, okay. shear walls, uh, without trigger, without the outer trigger, each system has different inelastic force. So to convert it from elastic to inelastic, we have what is called reduction factor, R. This R is equal to F elastic over F inelastic. This is what is called reduction factor. Based on the system that you are using, shear walls, frames, uh, moment frames, steels, concrete, they have different R to move from elastic to inelastic. And that's actually what was in the presentation is that there is a table based on the system Can you turn off the It's too much. Yeah. So based on the system, special when you to concrete shear walls, it has different uh, R response modification factor. It's called reduction factor or response modification factor. So you will look at response modification factor R has R equal to five. That means that if you have a base shear that is equal to a 500, you can divide by five and make it 100. But you will have to take care of things in your model. You have to design specific things of your model to make your building perform uh, in elastic. So here the standards are giving you like two pages, and each page has different ordinary reinforced concrete shear walls, detailed plain concrete walls, and lots like plain. Can you imagine not reinforced concrete? If it's plain, is it more elastic or more elastic? If it's a plain, that means if it has deformation, it will crack. Right, it might it will fail more than if it's reinforced. Okay, so that's why the reduction factor is less than the reinforced concrete. Uh, actually, you can see some reduction factors that can go up to eight here if you have steel frames, like the steel brace frames. The steels are like more elastic than the concrete. Concrete is not an elastic material. Okay, fails, doesn't pay attention. Right, so you have here eight. And we calculate other factors like overstrength factor, deflection amplification factors, all these factors, we calculate them. And this is for the seismic design only. Like if you are doing wind design, we don't do an elastic design, we do uh, elastic design. Okay, so this is for uh, the seismic design coefficient. The next thing is the structure. Uh, period, the, the fundamental period of your structure. So basically, the fundamental period of your structure should be calculated from the software. Why the software? Because the software accounts for everything, account for the stiffnesses, the masses, and everything, and then it gives you what is the, uh, what is the period of each mode shape. But also the codes give you an equations to come up with what is the period of your structure, TA. So TA is function and a factor is called CT and N. H is the height of the building. CT is function of the system that you are using. Like uh, if you are using moment resistant frame, steel moment resistant frame, you will use this function for the CT uh, concrete because, for example, if you have a building that has shear wall and building that has frames, uh, is, is both have the same period, each system, like the shear wall is more stiff than the frames. So we'll have different one. And this equation, this empirical equation tells us how to calculate the CT for this period. And also the same thing, the building height. If the building is much higher, it will have more period, like will be 10 seconds, like our building will be 10, 11 seconds. If it's thin story, it will be one second. So the height is important factor. And here's the x for each system that we do. So this equation we can use to empirically calculate the fundamental period of the structure. But also there's an equation if the number of the stories above the base is less than 10, we can use an empirical equation that's called TA is equal to 0.1 multiplied by n. So if you have 10 story, so 0.1 multiplied by 10 will be one second. 12 stories, it will be 1.2 seconds. But this is only true for buildings that has all the story or less, but it doesn't apply for our uh, structure. Okay, so here's like examples to calculate the T's, the one that I showed you here. T, T is the fundamental period of your structure, T0, T S, T L. 
This is here's the equations how to calculate them or how I calculate them, but this is only for tennis story. I'm making an example for tennis story, not six story. So 0.2 multiplied by SD1 over SDS. So all these equations are from this curve. SD1 over T, SD1 over T squared multiplied by TL. So I just substituted in this equation. And for all of us to be consistent, I don't want you, everyone is using different uh, site. All of us are going to assume that our building is in Los Angeles and the, uh, the site is soil D, soil pi D. I believe you can use the information here in this, just like except the number of the stories are different. But like you will use all these information. So Los Angeles, you will calculate these two, and soil type D, so we'll go in this equation, root one, 1 1.7. You can use all these information. Yep. And then you will calculate CA based on the equation here, point zero four point because here point zero two A is metric. So we are metric, so we are going to use point zero four eight eight multiplied by the height of the building by building the step story, which is always three meters, so thirty uh, to the power of point seven five, and then I calculated the period is point six three cent. However, here I'm saying this time period is low in comparison with the fundamental period calculated from SAP 2000, which is the most accurate, which is what the code based on the equations in the code. Okay. Uh, all right. So the next step is to calculate the base shear. An earthquake hit the building, and you want to calculate how much force this building is absorbed at the base. This is the force absorbed by the building at the base. It equals to mass multiplied by acceleration. But this is an acceleration that has many factors, has factors related to one fact, one more should I thought I saw. You saw something? Yeah, what what's CS pattern? Okay, there is, oh yeah, here's CS. Yes. So CS has acceleration, but has also reduction factor and also has equipment factor and has lots of other factors, but it's finally, it's meter per second squared. This value, and this is the CS, okay? And then we multiply this acceleration by the mass, the weight over G, so you will have G somewhere here. So it's kind of mass multiplied by acceleration, but we have here, Weight multiplied by CS, but it's the same thing, but it has lots of factors. And this weight is called the effective weight. What, what do I mean by the effective weight? Like we have dead load, we have live load, maybe we have lots of other loads inside our building, but we only account for the load that has maximum probability to be exist during the earthquake hitting the building. Because when you increase this weight, you are increasing the forces on your building. So we assume like for example, like the dead load, does it go? Like does the, the weight of the building go? It, it will stay in. How about the flooring, the tiles, the everything is in. How about the live load? So we assume a, a certain live load in this building based on the maximum live load, but we cannot assume that all this live load will be existing when the earthquake happens. So we need to reduce this load. So based on the building type and the building occupancy, this we reduce the live load to 25% or 50%. There is a section in the code that tells you what how to calculate the effective size of load. So write this down. We are going to assume that we have 100% of the own weight, 100% of the flooring, 50% of the live load for this project. Just 50% of the live load. And I will tell you how we will do this on the software. Okay. So this is what we call it effective seismic weight. Right? Okay, so this is for the weight. CS, it has an equation, this equation. So if your building has a T more than the T bone period, and this is what I assume for this project because our T will be very, very high, we will be using this equation to calculate the CS. And then we will use the CS multiplied by the weight, we will get the base shear. How much is our building absorbing 
modes from this from the seismic quality. Once you calculate them at CS and the weight of your structure, you get how much phase shear that you have. And I told you like an hour ago that this phase, phase shear value is at like around 10% of the building weight. But here it's 20%, which is a little bit higher than usual. But sometimes it can get up to 20%. But I believe in our project is going to be around 10%. Okay. Uh, all right. So, and then you assign this force for each story. So I want to know how much each story is absorbing. Like, where is this? Yeah. I believe that some of the slides, yeah, here's this is slide. So once I calculate the base here, I need to see the contribution of each story from this base here. So there's an equation that is function of the weight of each story and the height of each story that tells you what is the contribution of this story. So basically, you have the entire, you make a table. Right. Can you turn on the light, please? Yeah. So we calculated the base shear. Let's assume that the base shear is 1,000 ton. This 1,000 ton needs to be distributed in all these stories. I need to know what is the forces here. The sum of all these forces should be all 1,000 ton. Okay. So what we do, we do an Excel sheet, and this sheet will have a story number. The number of the story one two three up to 60 and then the weight of each story which all of them will be the same all of them has the same mass same load same everything so we'll have weight of load one two three and the height of each story story one is at three meter six nine up to 180 meter and then you multiply wi by hi so you multiply the number here with the number here and you get this done. Okay. Then, then the this is WI by HI. And then you, here you make an Excel function to sum all the WI by HIs. Like you sum all the values here. Okay. So this is for each story. If you want to get the contribution FI of each story, fi is equal to the weight of the story, apply the height of the story. I mean by the height, the height from the base here, fi, over the sum of wi's, hi's, over this number. Did you guys get it? Okay. The weight of the story, applied by the height of the story, of the sum of all the weights and all at all the heights here, this number. Okay, so right now we got the contribution of each story. Then in your building, let's assume that this is a plan of this story, the story here. I'm looking at the story at the last story of your building. This is the center of mass of your building. You hit the load that you calculated here with the center of mass you want. FI. Like this is my story. And then I hit this building at the center of mass. Am I going to do this manually? No, we will let the software do it. And I'm going to show you. Oh, it's recording. All right. I'm going to cut the uh the board work recording. All right. So does anyone have any question on this? Let's see how the software can do this. All right. Okay, you can turn off the lights. Okay, so first I need to find where is the center of rigidity of uh, the building. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to view this building in 3D. And I'm going to select all the stories. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to assign shell and there is something is called diaphragms. What is diaphragms? Diaphragms, I'm telling the software to do something. I'm telling the software to deal with this as a one mass. 
moving in X and moving in Y. Like this mass is going to make like this or not going to make like this as a, as a diaphragm. Like all the points on this mass is going to move together in X and going to move together in Y. So that's what I'm telling the software to do. I'm going to assign diaphragm and I assign diaphragm D1 and it will make a diaphragm for each story. That's a very, very important step, the diaphragm, okay? So here I'm going, I go to plan and view any plan. You will see how is the points all are connected to the center of rigidity of the building. So this diaphragm is dealt as a one mass or as a one point. The diaphragm basically can strain all the degrees of freedom of the structure in one degree of freedom, which is the degree of freedom of the mass here. So all these points on this floor is either go together X or go together Y or rotate together cannot leave each other. All of them should have the same X and the same Y and the same rotation values. Okay. So this is what the diaphragms do. Each story has a diaphragm. So each story has a point and this point is free to move X, Y or Z or rotate. And all the points on this diaphragm move together. Like all the building at the same story can move in X, Y and Z together. All right. So this is for the diaphragm. The second thing for seismic, I need to define the mass source. What mass that will contribute to the seismic? And this is the mass that I just told you, the dead load and 0.5 live load. 0.5 live load, you will go to define and do something is called mass source. Define mass source. This mass source is only for seismic. And when I go to mass source, I will modify the current mass source. In your model, you will, you will find all these nothing here but what you will do you will make a combination to the software so that can use the mass so i will tell the software use all the dead load multiplied by one and the flooring multiplied by 1.5 and the life 0.5 and right now my the etaps can now calculate the effective weight of our structure based on this combination okay 100 percent of the dead load 50 percent of the live load okay so this is for the mass source the second thing that you need to do since we assume that our structure is going to behave inelastically so that means that our section is going to be cracked i mean like it will have a permanent deformation and we need to design our section like we need like effective stiffness for the building. Actually, our building will not have 100% stiffness. It will lose some of the stiffness because it will retain some inelastic deformation. And the codes, the ACI codes give you how to design a crack section. Like it tells you in the ACI code, it tells you like the columns need to be reduced in inertia to 70%, from 100% to 70%. And uh, Walls need to be 70% and beams need to be 35%. Slabs need to be 0.25%. What I mean by this, you will, you will make the software do the seismic calculation based on cracked sections, not, uh, not elastic section or not full sections. How can I do this? It's a very easy. You will select all the columns in your structure. Did you name the columns C1, C2, C3? So what you will do, you will go to select, select, and I'm going to properties, frame section, and I have columns, these columns. I'm going to select them. It will select all the columns in your model, and you will assign frame, and you will find property modifier. When you go to property modifier, you are going to crack your section moment of inertia in X and Y direction. So you will make the moment of inertia in X direction not 100% and going to be 0.7%. Okay. All right. And then you will say, okay. That means that my section is this way working 70% and this way working 70%. Same thing for the beams. You will select, select properties, frame section, and I have beam 25 by 90. You select all the beams in your structure. Okay, maybe I have different beam. Okay. 
Now let me check the cross section of this beam. Oh, the beam is has the same has the same column section. Okay, whatever beam section that you have. Oh, uh, so this is this is like the point. Like right now, I draw the beam section same as the column section. So right now, I cannot change it. If I assign to column, it will be assigned to beam. But you have the column section separate from the beam section. So what you will do, you select all the beams that you have and multiply the inertia by 35%. So it will be 0.35. Same thing for the wall. You will select, select properties, wall sections, and you will go to wall and also the outriggers and spandrels. Select them. And then you will assign shell and you will find stiffness modifier for the shell. And then you will make the bending about M M11 direction. You will make it point. The walls is going to be, let's make it 0.7. M1 direction and M22 direction. 0.7. And actually, you can make all the bending modifiers 0.7 here. And then you will hit OK. And for the, I'm going to post the table that shows how much inertia that you should reduce. I'm going to post this page from the ACI code. And then once you reduce the all inertia, so right now your building is ready for in elastic analysis. Yeah. So right now we did the reduction factor, the stiffness reduction, mass source. So, so right now we are ready to define a load pattern that is different from the dead and live and flooring. So we will make another one. It's called earthquake in X direction. And we will go to the load type. You will find seismic. You will hit seismic. And the self-weight multiplier is zero. And auto lateral load. So basically, the software is asking you, do you want to calculate the lateral load by yourself? and you enter this load as a user modifier or user coefficient, or you want to use one of these standards. So you can do what I did and calculate all the loads by hand, and you get a table by all the forces and assign your loads story by story, or you can copy them from the Excel sheet to, your, uh, to the SAP 2000 platform, okay? You can do this, like actually in the Egyptian standards when I used to design building, they are not here. So I have to do all this calculation by hand and get all the forces and copy the forces from the Excel and import them to intact. So I go to user defined loads, like user loads here. So basically if you go to user loads, it will be something like this. And if you hit add and modify, you will find the table that asks you what is the FX at each story. So basically you will copy the column from the Excel sheet and you base the column here and you will find all the forces are showing up here. But if you want the software to do it for you, so since we are in America, we can design according to the SSE 716 and modify and modify letter load. So here it will ask you about the information what is the ct factor like is is it each one of these uh what is the um the sa you input these factors and the software is going to calculate it for you okay also one thing there is some website like the usgs can calculate these things for you if you tell the the site where are you like if if we like search maximum seismic design USGS web service. All right, so you can design according to the ASSC 716 standards. Okay, let's not this side. There is a map service. Yeah, here GIS service, earthquake models, product, earthquake hazards. Wow, not this one. Design ground motions. 
yeah this one ASC7 hazard tool you can check this tool and basically uh you can go to the address let's say Los Angeles California and search and check seismic and when you check seismic uh you check what is the risk level we are risk category two what is the soil class we are soil class d stiff soil and then you view the results and basically you can see a summary of all these parameters ss s1 the maximum design earthquake the design earthquake and it gives you everything about the soil so it it basically calculate the equations that i just showed to you it's not that big deal like if you put this equation in an excel sheet and you just to change one factor it will change the whole equation it's just like it's kind of a little bit fancy, but it's that's actually what basically this software is doing. You can use this and use this information to build uh, your model. Okay, so you can copy this information and put them here. But since I'm doing X direction only, I will want to check Y. Uh, you can include eccentricity, like the software is going to try if the force is eccentric, it's not hitting at the center of mass. All uh, right, or this is takes into account many uncertainties you didn't include in your model. Like we didn't model the stairs and the stairs really impact the center of rigidity because the stairs is kind of something that add rigidity to your building. We didn't include many things. That's why we need to include eccentricity, but you don't have to care about this for this project. This is when we do design. You can actually make the eccentricity zero. Like you can uncheck these and only check X direction only for this project. And, uh, here is the uh, CT, like you can uh, put the CT, here's what is the software did it, you can make it user defined, like you give the software or ETAPS, what is the value of CT and it's going to calculate T, or you can give it T directly, what is the T that you have, that you calculate from the code, so you can put T here, or basically uh, you go to like the I showed you that there is a table for the CT. Here. Yeah. So all other structures are going to be 0 0.0488 or 0 0.02. And that's what the software did it 0 0.028 or 0 0.8. So you just check these. Here you have the top story is story, story number 60. You put SS, S1, a long period, the one that you calculated either manually or either from the website here. You put all this information here, FA, FV, SDS, SD1, and then the uh, response modification factor, R, omega, CD, all the factors here, response modification factor over strength factor, and when it's, once you hit run, the software will use these factors to generate the loads. So you don't have to go through the whole process. You just put the factors and software is going to run the equations and calculate the loads and assign the loads to the, the, the slabs. And this is only in the X direction. So if we say, okay, you can add a copy or you can add another one, you name it Y and add new load and modify this load and you can uncheck the x and only check the y direction and then you check all these factors you put all the right numbers and then you say okay and then you hit run it will take like 15 minutes until your software complete the run and you start getting the results okay is that clear do you want us to run the combination no, no, just the earthquake in the X direction. Okay, so for the report, do you want? You can, if we are going to do design, you can add a bunch of the dead, a bunch of the live, and also the earthquake, and then you take this load, design the columns, design the shear walls. We are not going to do this. We just need this training action that coming from the earthquake, how much lateral force that we have, uh, sorry, lateral displacement, interstory drift, shear lag, and all of these so information. The model should we separate like dead and live load? This is how our slab is like acting and then 
the yeah. Globe, this is how our earthquake X. Yeah, because the lateral drift is only coming from the earthquake. All the vertical loads is not going to make lateral drift. So it's coming only from the earthquake. Okay. So you run your model. Once you run your model, you will get a, a result something like this. Like this, it will you will have like this is. Yeah, it will take some time. Uh, let's show the results on on another. So this is the model with the uh, outriggers. After I run the model, let's see how we show the results. So let's show analysis results. So I want you, I want to show you some information. First thing that I want to show you how to get tables to show reactions. So you can go to plan and you can go to story number one or base if you want to get reactions. Okay, and then you can select this site. This is all the reactions and you can go to display, show tables. And in the tables, you can get joint output. You go to joint output and we need to get reactions, joint reactions for these columns, okay? And you will select the load pattern that you need to get reaction for. Okay, I want to get the load pattern earthquake X. And then you will say, okay. And then you will say, okay. So it will shows you here the reaction why why the show combinations wait okay it shows it shows the joint reactions for the six step earthquakes because when i run this model i add eccentricity so to add earthquake x plus eccentricity 0 0.05 here 0 0.05 here from the other side so did lots of things, but let me, this one is still running. Okay, but anyway, you will have one earthquake X once you uncheck the eccentricity. So you will have one and you will have for column number one, 22, 23. So we'll have only one value for each column, not six values. Okay, so here I have six values. So if you only check the earthquake X, you will have one, 22, and you will have the reactions for these columns. And what I want you to show me, this side, there is columns here, and I'm showing the earthquake X means there's like X at the moment is this way, right? So I believe that this column will have a reaction like this and this column will have a reaction like this, okay? So you will get the reaction here, 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 here. And then you take them to Excel and draw them, see then how they look like. Supposed to be not linear and it shows you how does the shear leg look like? Something like this. That's what it's supposed to show. Like how it will be something like this. I need you to do this at the base and also another two stories, like at story number 30 and story number 60 and show how this look like. And you can plot them on the same curve. So they might show something like this. And another story is going to be something like this. So this is when you plot them. And what we plotted right now is reactions. So how about stories? For stories, you will select 
columns and show the reaction, show the internal force in the columns, like you basically going to view set uh, 3D view. That's for one model, yes? What? That's for one model. Well, I need for all models. It's just one view, you know, and the really app uh, computer is low speed. But even if you want to just open something, it takes time. I don't know, it's, it's so hard. So you will basically, so. so oh. such a computer. All right. So if you, if I'm telling you, if you have a load pattern and I'm asking you to define this earthquake and you just like put some numbers and run the model and just what you are going to do in this week, just getting the results. Okay. So you guys do. Yeah, you know, we need to just, you know, uh, behind a computer from the morning to night, just running holes. You know, okay. Such, you know. Is result from Eastern all right Eastern. okay for the shear lag calculations i will ask you to only get it for the master model but for the base shear and mm -hmm. other information we'll get it from all models you will have to run all the models and get one number but since these are many numbers i can allow you to only get the shear lag for the master model but for other models it will be something specific okay let me write this down all right, can you cool. turn on the lights? Hmm. <laughs> so, shear and lag. So, one. Professor, would it be possible you send us an uh, outline what you want in the presentation and what you're expecting in the, okay. in the report? Because this is a presentation for Monday and there's not a clear path what you want us Results. Like, uh, what? That's, what, that's, that's what I'm going to show right now. What is the results that I want you to see? So the first thing that I, I put here is the shear lag. And um, right here, the shear lag for only the master model. I want to show you, like, if you have a building here, first don't freak out. Like, I mean, like, you guys are going to do great. Like, if, if you guys do your best, and I'm going to like assess you based on what the best that you do. I'm not like pushing you. When you guys say this is too much, I keep reducing the loads. Okay. For the shear lag, I only want you to calculate the reactions at the base columns and show how they look like from the earth equation. Will be something like this. So you will select the columns and then you explore the table and see what reactions that you have at the column location just for the master model, okay? The second thing is interstory drift. I'm going to show you how to do the interstory drift in one click. It doesn't have to be something like, just you will say, show story drift, copy based on your, on your report. Enter the story drift. And actually, because it will take like a minute, so let's, let me show you how to show it. Like, Basically, what you will do, you will go to display and you will find story responses. You hit story responses and a window is going to show up and then you can copy paste the curve that it will show and put it in your report, something like this. So this is how the story drift look like due to the Cases dead load, I'm going to change it to Earthquake X. You change the case here, you will find a table, and then you will change the case from dead load to Earthquake, something like this. So all what you will do is copy paste this and put it in the report. Is that difficult? Again, you will go to display, Like a picture of that in the report. Yeah. This will be for every model. For every model. Yeah. So every model that you run, you will just show this and then copy paste in your in your like you can put them together. Like this is for model one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then copy paste. And then this is is called maximum story displacement. This is one, and you're going to to the drop the drop down list. 
and show it will be something that is called maximum story drift. So a couple things, show story information, change the case from dead mode to earthquake, it changed this to maximum story drift and story displacement. That's it, we'll get two figures, copy paste them in the report. That's it, so enter story drift. Okay, here I'm changing the maximum, uh, not the maximum story displacement. I'm going to make it maximum story drifts. Let's make it. Okay, so this is for the drift. The second thing, or all the other things, it will be just one number. Like you will have a table that put these numbers in. You will put a table that you will have the enter story drift, maximum drift. Maximum drift for the building is the drift at the tip here. Here. You find it and put it in a table. Like you'll have a table and put the numbers. Like story drift and what is called fundamental brilliance. And base shear. And I'll show you how to get them right now. So I showed you how to get the enter story drift and also the uh, So this is this is it shows the displacement like like here it shows how mood one is is showing and I show you how to get it so basically you will go to um, let me here you will go to display display and then you will go to the format shape. And in the format shape, you will say that I want to show the mode shape number one. Mode shape number one is the here. You will not case. You will show mode and mode number one. There's mode number two, three, four. We need to see how is mode one look like. And when you say okay, it will show this shape. How is your building in mode one look like? It has an X direction. I'll show you also what is the period. 15.67. I want you to put the fundamental grade 15.6 seconds for this structure for 15.5. So just two clicks show format shape because the format shape mode mode one and then we'll get one number and put it in for, for model one, two, three, up to ten. So this is one number, maximum drift, one number. Inter story drift, you can get the maximum inter story drift, one number as well. So let me get back here. So this is the maximum interstory story drift. This is how the building drift look like. Can you see? Do you guys know there's difference between drift and interstory story drift? Drift is the total. total. Inter story, the difference between this story and this story, this story and this story, okay? So what happens here is because of the outrigger, that's the shape, but actually, if there is no outrigger, you will find that the maximum story drift is going like this and returning it back with like something like this. But here's because of the, the outrigger is pulling back for a structure. That's actually the benefit of having an outrigger in decreasing the drift. Like I believe if you don't have this, it will be something like it goes like here and then we turn back here. So you'll have into the story very good here. All right, so I believe somewhere here it shows the maximum like here. This is the value of the maximum that I want to see. But also I want to see the shape, the profile of the building, how it looks like. Okay, so it's basically one click. This is play, show story information, and then this will pop up, and then you will change this to maximum story drift and change this to play, And you will show that. Is that difficult? Okay, sir, real quick. Which one is the back drift? This is inner story drift or this is enter story drift. The drift is always like this. It never gets back. 
Okay, okay, okay. But this is interest. This is interest story drift. The drift is something like this. Okay, and then show that tool here. Yeah. So you will show two profiles for your problem. Interest story drift and drift. Okay. Yeah. But you, like you're in max story drift. Maximum story drift. That's what we mean. Maximum story drift. If you want to show drift, I showed it last time. Like here, you will go to. Uh, sorry, this is maximum. Wait, let me check. This is drift. Oh yeah, this is a story drift. But enter story drift will be like. This one should be something like this, but it makes like this because of the displacement. Entry story drift will be similar, but it's going like this, very sharp. But it's kind of heavy, like it's still loading. But on the display side, it shows the entry story drift. Yeah. I'm just wondering if this one is working. You'll go to uh, display and story response plots is it the virtue is it hot so you will get story response plots it will take like a minute because i'm i'm having three windows open so i'm just like trying to show as much results as i can okay the the second thing that I want to do is also the base shear. In the base shear, I hope one of these windows will. Yeah. Okay, so this is, is the displacement that coming from maximum story displacement at dead load. But I'm I need to change the dead load. So here, can you see the drop down? I will make it earthquake X, and it change the displacement type. I'm not going to change it because it will take lots of time, but I just want to show you how is the drop down look like the drop down list here. Can you see it? You will find maximum story displacement, maximum story drift. You know right now the difference between displacement and drift. Displacement is like this, but drift is the difference between the lower story and the top story. Okay. All right. So, so the max drift is the. the, the uh, the maximum story. displacement. Right, yeah. Displacement is different from the right. All right. So, how to get the base shear? Base shear display. Total base shear. You will go to display. Show tables. And then in tables, you will show structure output and you will show base reactions. Okay, let's I check all of these. Base reactions, click. And then uh, you will select the load cases. So I want to show the base reactions earthquake X. And then I'll say, okay. Okay, let's see what is the base reactions. Okay, so base reactions here is 434,542 kilonewton. This is the base reactions that your structures have. Negative, it's because of like you are assigning the earthquake in different directions. But this is what we call the base shear. Can you see because it's only earthquake x, all the forces in the x direction. But Fy, Fz are almost zero. Fy has very, very low amount because of the eccentricity or the irregularities that your building have. And similarly, Fz, all these are almost uh, zero. Fy and Fz. Mx is zero, but my has a big value. Why? So your structure is pushing in the x direction, so it's going to make moment about y, not, not moment about x. Okay. So this is the, the overturning moment that your structure is having. Okay. So that's what I want you to show the base shear that your structure is having. So this will be another one number that you will add to the list. Okay. 
So you will have your models available showing, showing what is the maximum delay, what is the maximum displacement, what is the fundamental period, what is the ratio for each goal. Each step will take a minute. Go show display, show story information, and then story plots, and then you take the plots from them and go report. And then display, show the format shape, and show me model, and show me mode one. On this mode one, we will find what is the gradient of mode one. Is. Okay. Uh, also, one of the things that we talked about, I want to also you, you to know it, like, uh, for your information, you don't have to show to show it to me in the report. You can go to show tables, and with show tables, you will show not base shear. You will show what is called modal information. Since this building has lots of modes, you will find what is called a uh, modal participating mass ratio. You click on this. And let me show what is the results from this case. So basically, this feature is going to show you what is the period for each mood shape, mood shape one, mood shape two, and also what is the amount of mass that each mood shape is moving. We have 60, right, sir? Hmm? We have 60. Yeah, we have a lot, but actually you will have to say in the analysis up, up in the front how many mode shapes that you want to run. Okay. And uh, I believe the basic number is 12 mode shapes. Okay. And I will tell you right now a hint about this, like when we design building, how much mode shapes that we need so that our design will be perfect or will be good. Let me, here's the same model, but it's with our trigger. I don't know why it's taking its size. Please wait while the table. Yeah, here it comes. So it runs and got you all the all the results. So mode one, so it runs only 12 modes. However, this building could have not 16, could have 16x, 16y, 16 rotation, a lot. But maybe the model will take forever before it runs all those models. Okay. But right now we will run 12. But the thing is, is 12 enough to run our model? So the codes are saying for your model to be accurate, you should include as much as of this mode shape as soon as you are shaking 90% of the mass. Okay. If your modes contributes to total masses that are shaped more than 90% of the total mass, so your model is good. Okay, so let's see. The first period is 15.6 seconds. The one is the one after is 14, and I expect the 14 is in y direction because they are very close to them. And eight, uh, second is the third, which I believe it's quotient. And then you have another four, four, until the lower modes. The lower modes, their contribution is very, very low because it's a, it's not easy to make this motion. It's like, can you imagine? I'm saying that your structure is going to make something like this. It's not easy for your structure to make this motion. But it's easy for my structure to go this motion. So we call these higher modes. And the one that are like 20 is or 40 is our higher mode and has low mass participating issues. Okay, let's see what we have here. So we have 0.69 of the mass is shaped or contribute to this 0.69. But if you include more modes, we'll find another 12% coming from this mode and 5% coming from this mode and 0.35 coming from this mode. So in design firms, we need to include number of modes that, that makes the sum of all these masses equal to not less 90%, okay? So this is for X, same thing for Y. And actually seeing this table, I can see that this mode is in X direction because Y and Z are zeros. And I can see that this mode is in Y direction because the most contribution coming from Y here, but here's zero, and here's zero. Here, X and Y and Z are zeros, which explains that it, it's quotient. Like you will go here, you will find that here's the sum X, sum Y, sum Z, this is our X. Let's go to the table to the right. Here, you will find RZ is 72%. 
that means that this mode is about rotation about Z, okay? And if you show here mode number, uh, if you click, if you show mode number, uh, what is the mode number of this? Is that four? This three. If you show mode three, you will find the building is making like this. Yeah. Um, and here, actually, it gives you the sum so that you can convert. If you see here, 12 mode is giving me 90%. Actually, I could have a start at mode number 10 because it's already I got the 90%. I don't need the other two modes. And here, but if I stop at number 10, this Y is getting only 87%. So I have to increase the modes to, be, to get 90. So Y get the 90% at the 11th mode. And going at the R, let's go right here. R is start to give the 90% at mode number 12. So I have to have 12 modes to make sure that 90% 90, 90 of the mass is moving in X direction, Y direction, also making torsion. I don't, need, I don't want you to check this because I already checked it here because I'm, I'm doing the same model, but I'm just like give you what's going on behind the scene. How, when we design the full buildings, what we need to make sure about, what we need to like know, what, like how, how many load shapes that I need to include. This is what controls the whole thing. Okay, so uh, is this difficult? So it's, I don't want you to do this. I only for each model, I want you to tell me what is the entry story bit, what is uh, the maximum entry story bit, the story bit, the maximum story displacement, the fundamental period, and the base sheet. Just one minute for each model. And showing the results, we will find out what is this number. For the shear lag, if you find it difficult, do it only for the master story and get. One one curve. I don't want you to get all these curves. Uh, or you get it for not get it for all the other models, but you get it at least for two different stories. Like you get it at the base, and maybe story number twenty and story number forty. And show me what is these values are. In the base, you are showing only reactions, as as I showed you a minute ago. Like you, let me. You select these columns and show the reactions. But if it's uh, if it's a story number 20, you will go to the plan. And then maybe you'll go here, story number 20. Right. Let's show on the format shape. So on the format shape, you, you basically click here. Actually, story number 20 has an out trigger. So we will go a little bit up to the next story. Okay, and I will clear my selection and I select these columns on this side. And you will go to display, show tables. And then you will not get joint output. You will get element output because right now I'm selecting columns and it's a frame area and I want to get column forces. This column forces and select the load case, make sure that you're selecting the earthquake and you say, okay, and it will show all the reaction in these columns. Yeah, so you, you will basically have one earthquake load. This is C1. All right, let me see if I select. Yeah, so if you have only one earthquake load, not many, uh, if you uncheck the eccentricity and only one earthquake X, like when you go here, define load pattern. 
earthquake X and you modify it. I don't think if I can modify it now, but I can't. But you uncheck all these boxes. So you only have one value for each column, not many values. And you get these reactions, tabulate them and plot them with respect to the distance and see how the reaction look like. Okay. Yeah. So is does anyone have any question? Hmm. You mean like the full submission? Yeah, so maybe like, you know, I'm okay. Just, okay. Just, okay. But, but actually, actually, what I listed in the, um, in the, in the, in the project description, you need to present your results next week on Monday, but you can submit the full submission like few days after, like. Oh, okay. Yeah, so 28th, and you can make the full submission at like Saturday, December 3rd. Like you write the report and. Uh, I think the fifth? Uh, it's the, the last day of the classes, like the fifth. Okay. But the thing is, I'm not sure about the grades. There's a deadline to submit the grades. So, what was that? December 3rd is the last day of 13th. 3rd. No, no, the last day of classes is 3rd, right? December 3rd. So, I believe we need to target December 3rd. And then because I have to submit your grades at least December 5th or something. Okay. Is that good? Yeah, it works. So basically you will work on the results and get your model ready. And that's what you care about. And maybe you write the report in the time from 28th to the to December 3rd. Like you have six days uh, to write the report. But since you all have the geometry, most of you, when I met them in my in my office, they have the geometry almost done. Yeah. So basically, all what you will have to do, you will go to define load pattern and then define the pattern of the earthquake and put all the parameters. All what I did in the first hour, I just want to show you how all these are coming from. But basically, you can go to define and put the numbers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm thinking of it. So I already built the models, right? But now you got to define a load pattern for every model now, right? Because, like, you know what I'm saying? So every time we go now, every model that we build, we have to go and find the same load pattern, right? There's no way to just translate. Uh, I don't think so, but it's easy. You will just like come here, add it, and it, it will take yes, one minute exactly. You can take a screenshot from what you have. Yes, sir. And actually, you can use USGS to paste all these numbers, mm -hmm. and you can copy-paste in your models, everyone. And uh, four in each group, H4 has three models. Each four can take care of three models and put these numbers, and that's it. And run the models, and basically it's very simple. You will just come in your model, display story, display base shear, display tables, and get the results and put the results in your uh, in your report. Okay. And uh, I will be available this week, so stop by my office if you have any question. I'm sorry I wasn't available last week. I was out of state. But this week, um, I will be in, in the office. But just, like, email me. Tell me, like, when are you coming? So I make sure that I'm in my office at that time. I don't have meetings. I will post the... Uh... Yeah, I will just stop the...